Hi, I'm Lee Glazer. I'm the Curator of American Art at the Freer Gallery of Art, and we're here in the Peacock Room, James McNeil Whistler's spectacular interior decoration, and we're looking at his painting, The Princess from the Land of Porcelain, which hangs over the mantel. It wasn't intended as a site-specific work. The Peacock Room was created more than 10 years after the painting, but it was in fact the painting's presence in the room that inspired Whistler's radical redecoration in 1876. The painting, which dates to 1864-65, was part of a series of costume pictures that Whistler was creating early to mid 1860s uh, when he depicted Western models in Asian costumes surrounded by um, objects from China and Japan, many of which were in his own collection. We have several more of these kinds of costume paintings in the Freer Gallery, of which Caprice in Purple and Gold, the Golden Screen is one, and the Balcony is another. An American by birth, Whistler had moved to Paris in 1855, determined to become an artist. And while there, he quickly fell in with a group of avant-garde French painters, particularly the realist Gustave Courbet. Now, around 1860, he was now living in London, and he was feeling the anxiety of that early realist influence and trying to shed it. And one of the ways that he attempted to reinvent himself, to become not a realist any longer, but an esthete, an artist painter, painting for art's sake was to uh, look east. Whistler's creative borrowings um, of the objects and influences of Asian art was a way to suggest a world far removed from Victorian London. So while the title of this painting, The Princess from the Land of Porcelain, clearly alludes to China as its source of inspiration, it's actually really a pastiche of both Chinese and Japanese influences. The Western model is the noted Anglo-Greek beauty, Christina Spartali. She appears on a blue and white Chinese rug. The pattern suggests a pavement of porcelain in a room that includes a Japanese folding screen, a Chinese vase, a Japanese fan, and a costume that is Japanese, but arrayed on the ground in the style of a figure painted on a Chinese porcelain pot. She strikes a pose that recalls both the elongated figures depicted on Chinese Kangxi porcelain and the graceful courtesans that appear in ukiyo-e prints, which Whistler also collected. Eventually, the princess was purchased by the shipping magnate Frederick Leyland, who hung it in his London dining room, where he also displayed his extensive collection of Chinese blue and white porcelain. Whistler believed that the room didn't really harmonize very well with his painting, and he suggested first some minor changes uh, to the wall hangings surrounding the princess. Uh, one thing led to another, but suffice it to say that it was the presence of the princess in the room that inspired harmony in blue and gold, the peacock room. In 1903, it was purchased by the American industrialist, Charles Lang Freer, the founder of this museum. Freer purchased the entire Peacock Room and had it shipped to his house in Detroit, where he had a special edition built uh, to house the room, and he also hung the princess in its accustomed place over the mantel. Later in 1923, the Peacock Room was reassembled and opened to the public at the Freer Gallery of Art, where it's on permanent view, and once again, the princess presides over a land of porcelain and is a fitting sort of emblem of the cosmopolitan ideal of the meeting of East and West that Freer hoped to immortalize in his museum.